welcome to Redeemer this morning on this first Sunday in Lent. Uh, we follow the order of service as it is provided. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have never remedied you, and justly preserved your soul and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. 
He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son, laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they both, so they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his thorn, horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and protector of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle is from James chapter 1. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory be to you, Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. 
with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to be your Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with his glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
catechism today. What is the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer? And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What does this mean? We pray in this petition that our Father in heaven would not look at our sins or deny our prayer because of them. We are neither worthy of any sins in the Lord's prayer, nor have we deserved Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So there once was a little girl, not very old, but, a, but old enough to talk and to walk and to enjoy things. And she had a little brother, no, oh, not much younger than her, maybe a year. And one day, their grandmother gave them some sweets. Oh, these children, they loved candy. And they loved candy so much that they didn't want to just eat it all at once, but they wanted to save some so that they could enjoy it over time. And so they both found a little hiding place, and, and they put most of their candy away, and they enjoyed their first piece together. And oh, what a wonderful sweetness it was. And then one day later, the girl had a friend of hers over, and she wanted this friend to become an even closer friend. She wanted to do something special for this friend so that she would be a, a, a very fond and fast friend. So she thought, well, maybe if I shared some candy with this friend of mine, that she would become an even closer friend. She would be a lifelong friend. But this little girl, she really liked her candy, and she didn't really want to share her candy with her friend. But her brother's candy, that was just over there a little ways. So she took a piece of her brother's candy, and she gave it to her friend, pretending it was hers. And her friend enjoyed her piece of candy along with her. Well, it wasn't long after that, and her brother came in and found out that one of his pieces of candy was missing. And he was becoming a little angry over it. How could somebody take his piece of candy away from him? And then he noticed that his sister and her friend were enjoying their candy, and his anger got the best better of him. And he reached out and he touched her. Not with his fingers, but, well, the back side of his fingers, maybe. And he made his sister cry. We see here that temptation comes to all people, doesn't it? The poor little girl, just trying to be friendly, was tempted. And that temptation turned into desire. And that desire to sin. And her little brother, not to be outdone, right? His anger led to temptation to sin. And he acted out as well. We understand the situation. We know it. We understand it. We even see it in our own lives. Maybe not with a piece of candy, but in other ways. We think evil of others. We say things about others. We do things and we take things and we harm other people. We don't know why we do it sometimes, we just do it because we want a friend or because we're upset with the other person. We live in a fallen world, but it's not an excuse. Imagine. Living in a perfect world, living in a world that is pristine, something that is just simply given to you as the pinnacle, beyond measure. Everything is in 
or under your control, within your purview. Nothing is withheld from you except one thing. Adam lived, he and Eve, in a paradise beyond our imagination. Imagine where the lion comes up and curls around at his feet and he scratches his belly. Where the wolf doesn't howl and growl at you at night, but curls up next to you and sleeps with you. Where even the spider is not interested in biting you or the, or the viper. Where nothing is antagonistic towards you. But there's only that one thing that is forbidden. Temptation leads to sin and then to death. I think James understands it as he writes about it in his epistle. Certainly, our Lord understands it. He knows it. It is for this reason that he comes into the world. St. Mark writes about it here in the gospel. And, you know, St. Mark in his gospel, he's rather sparse. He just kind of lays out a couple of facts and he moves right along. Immediately this happens, immediately that happens. And, and we see here in our reading that we jump back to the baptism because how do you have a reading from the gospel that's only two sentences long? So we incorporate a few other things. But if we look at that little middle portion of our reading today, after Jesus is baptized, it says that the Holy Spirit drove him out. It cast him out. He was, he was tossed out into the wilderness. It's almost like an eviction. Here you are, you're my beloved son. Boom, out into the wilderness you go. No garden for you. He's out there with the wild beasts. There's not a friendly face to be found. Because in Adam's sin, now the lion wants to devour him. Now the, the wolf wants to tear him apart. Every spider out there is poisonous and wants to bite. Every viper is there to defend itself with them. And during those 40 days, He's tempted by Satan. Mark doesn't give us specific temptations. You know, it's good that we see the ones that Matthew and Luke mention. But I think it's good that we see how Mark portrays it for us. Because he doesn't limit it. If all we had was Matthew, we might think, well, I could withstand three temptations. So we think. But for 40 days... It's not just the wild, it's not just the dry and the arid land, it's not just that he's hungry and he's thirsty, but that he's constantly antagonized by the devil. As the devil is tempting him to do what he got Adam to do, so that there would be no hope for you. But Jesus, is not to be tempted. He's not to, to succumb to desire. But his desire is to do his Father's will. His desire is to accomplish that for which he came. To be obedient to his Father in every respect. Actively, as he does what the Father desires. And passively. As he succumbs to your death. So that you may never know what it means to be separated from the love of God. I got to thinking about it a little bit. I don't know why it came to my mind this morning. But I, I went down to the American Legion over here in Westbrook earlier this week and was talking to a gentleman. And that gentleman was a retired fireman. And he just started talking about the job a little bit, being on the job. And he says, boy, those young folks, they're, they're just not the same. Isn't that the truth, right? It's, it's for everybody. But he made a good point, is that, you know, when, 
When he was at the firehouse, he and the other guys would sit around and play pinochle. And they would joke and they would chat. They would get to know each other. And he said the kids nowadays, they just go to their room and they play video games. So they don't, be, they don't build those same bonds. They don't get to know one another. I was thinking, wow, that's kind of interesting, right? And then I got to thinking a little I mean, I think we all kind of recognize it a little bit. But then I also got to thinking about us in church and how we are being driven to our rooms with our little screens. How church is becoming a virtual reality. Temptation and sin is not virtual. And God's grace is not virtual. Those are concrete and they are real. Jesus truly comes in the flesh. He truly is driven out into the wilderness and tempted just as you are in every single way. And he truly and actually denies temptation to take hold of him. He truly and actually is obedient to his heavenly father. And yet, because it is his destiny, he truly is nailed to a cross and dies for your sins and for mine. There's no virtual reality about it. Here again today, he comes to you in his true body and in his true blood to give you true forgiveness of your actual sins. This is our God. This is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Doing for you what you cannot. Giving to you what you do not deserve. But doing it out of abundance of love and mercy. Because he desires you. Much more than you desire him. But thanks be to God for that. Thanks be to God that he desires you. I close with the final words of our hymn. The victory's won. The kingdom, ours, remaineth. Amen. Please stand. Peace, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Surgery. 
um, uh, to do some repairs following her uh, radiation. And, um, and so we pray for her recovery and success there as well. Um, we're also um, Gabby's friend, Dale. Uh, we pray for her family. Uh, her grandmother died at, uh, this, within the last couple of days or so. And, uh, and so we pray for the entire family. And then uh, this week we have two birthdays on Wednesday. So we pray for Lois and for Peter, who both celebrate their birthdays on Wednesday. So let's then pray for all in Christ Jesus and for all others according to their needs. Heavenly Father, as we enter this Lenten season of repentance and renewed devotion, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ, and instruct and lead us by your Spirit in your way so that we may repent and believe the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you placed the wood of the cross on the back of your only begotten Son, that as the promised offspring of Abraham, he might possess the gates of hell. Bless, we pray, his church and all those to, uh, called to preach and to teach within her, with the certainty that those gates cannot prevail against them, that in faith they may boldly trample every power of the enemy underfoot. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve all catechumens and their teachers, all children and their parents, and every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As your son overcame Satan in the, in the desert by the word of God, so also give us the victory through Christ and his word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father of lights, from whom every good and perfect gift comes down to us from above. Keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts in sin. And help us to use them rightly in service to you and our neighbor. Bless, we pray, Mark, Chen, Naomi, Ingo, Jean, Sally, George, and the Iverson family. Grant to them um, the, the promises that you give, O oh Lord, and command your angels to guard these, our brothers and sisters. For all upon our prayer list and all who suffer in our midst, for all that uh, for whom we should be praying, keep them from every evil that can befall the body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, the time is fulfilled and your kingdom is at hand as your beloved Son comes to us here at the altar. By your Spirit, grant that we may receive him in repentance and believe the gospel proclaimed to us in his body given and his blood shed. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we remember with thanksgiving those before us whom you brought forth by the word of truth who now live and reign in your presence with your Son. As you have also brought us forth by that word of baptism, we pray that you would uh, bring us to full maturity by your word, that we too may be gathered with them to your Son on the glorious harvest of that last day. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and who rose again, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are going to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I do have, uh, you can be seated, I have one announcement, um, and that has to do with the, an email you should have received from Paul this last week um, concerning the mission and vision statements for the congregation. Um, Please take the time and, uh, and click on that link and, and follow through on that. I think it's just a very short survey of giving some, some input. Um, it's important that the entire congregation has the opportunity. And I would say that it's important that everybody try to weigh in on this so that there is a solid consensus among the congregation. Um, it is the hope. So the, or the council meets Tuesday night, and, and, and I anticipate we'll probably discuss this a little bit. And then, but the idea is that it would be prepared for the, uh, the congregation at a voters assembly in April uh, on that first review of, of this year, um, that it would be put before the whole congregation. Um, and, um, and so it wants to, we want to get it refined as best as possible um, so that what is presented is what the congregation wants. Um, are there other announcements here that I should be making? Help. Mary? Okay, so if anybody didn't hear, Mary's looking for anybody that desires uh, to participate in some special music, singing or instrument, um, just contact her and she'll work with you on that. Brenda. We are doing sign up uh, to purchase Easter flowers and there's a sign up in the narthex and also you can, um, people can email me and uh, let me know what they want. It was in the, the news and announcements. Yeah so, yeah, so you can email Brenda if you desire to purchase flowers for Easter, which is quickly approaching, six weeks away now, right? Okay. So those with us on Facebook, God bless you.